what's up guys so this is a video that's kind of long overdue i want to talk about my favorite lens it's going to surprise a lot of you because you probably never heard of this lens most people i tell about it haven't really ever used it but it's this little baby right here this is a vintage lens it is a old canon fd 50 millimeter f 1.4 super fast little 50 millimeter lens. And really the biggest reason why I love it is just the look that it gives the footage that I get with it. So this is an all manual lens, so no autofocus on this. Because of that, I think that this lens has actually made me a better filmmaker. And why that is, is because if you talk to anybody, any DP or cameraman, that are shooting films, uh, short films, you know, any, any kind of professional film, and they all use manual focus. Now, manual focus is going to force you to think a lot more about what you're trying to capture, and what you're focusing on in the frame is going to be what people look at. So, it's a really good way of helping tell your story and really like you have your, your hands on the wheel and you're in control. You're not just letting the camera do whatever it wants to do. Now that's not to say autofocus isn't amazing. I mean, I'm using autofocus right now. I have tried to shoot a vlog with this lens before and it is very difficult. It's pretty hard to focus on yourself when you know, you're kind of far away. It is possible, but with a 50 millimeter, you have to be kind of far away. Right now I'm like, almost six or seven feet from the camera in order to get this shot. I'm shooting this right now on a Sony 50 millimeter 1.8. It's just a really cheap lens uh, I picked up for like 250 bucks or something. But today I want to test the lens I'm using right now, the Sony 50 millimeter 1.8 and compare it to this 50 millimeter 1.4 vintage lens. I've actually never done this and I'm curious to see if it's really actually looks a lot better or if it's just in my head thinking because it's this cool old lens that it's gonna have a more filmic look. Um, I wanna really test it and see if that's actually the case. So the beauty of vintage lenses and why I actually first got into them when I was first getting into shooting video is they're cheap. So you can go out, you know, if, you know, you might spend a thousand dollars on your camera body and you might not have much left to spend another thousand dollars on a lens. So this is a good way that you can get started and you can try out different focal lengths to see what works best for you, what you like the best. 50 millimeter is what is closely resembles what you see day to day. So it's a really easy lens to shoot with and to kind of find like what you want to shoot and you can kind of envision it before you actually shoot it. 50 millimeters is a great just all around focal length. The reason why I first bought this lens actually is because I was reading on this website, good vintage lenses for filmmaking. I found on several different websites, this lens kept being mentioned and it has kind of a cult following to it. Even though this lens is only like a hundred bucks or you can find it for even cheaper, I think I bought it for 80 bucks. A lot of filmmakers use this lens and I just found out recently that Stanley Kubrick loves this lens and has actually used it in a few of his films, but one in particular I know called Barry Lyndon, which I've never actually seen. So I'm gonna have to watch that tonight and I'll let you guys know what I think of it. But if it's good enough for Stanley Kubrick, it's good enough for me. The reason why people like vintage lenses and the reason why I, at least I think I like vintage lenses, is that they have like a coating on the glass. The coating that they used to use, it just has a different look than newer, you know, more maybe more sharper lenses. It has more character to the lens and it, it almost gives like a slight tint to it. We'll be able to really test that out when we look at this footage afterwards and see what the, what the color shift is. But I feel like it gives kind of a warm filmic cinematic look to it. Every shot I get on this and I've, I've shot with a bunch of different lenses and I just keep going back to this lens and I just feel like it looks the best. And I love this little thing. So obviously in order to use this lens, since it's an old FD Canon mount, you're gonna need an adapter. I'm shooting on a Sony A6600 right now 
And I have this adapter right here that mounts to a Sony E-mount. It is a Photodiox. I think I bought it for 25 bucks, so super cheap. The nice thing about adapters for manual lenses is they don't need any um, components inside for the autofocus, so it just makes them a lot cheaper. Whereas the other ones might cost more like 350 bucks for one of the Meta Bones um, adapters that has autofocus. So it doesn't make it too much bigger. It's actually a fairly small setup when it's all said and done. If I can get this back together, there we go. And you know, it's not that big. I'll attach, I usually have these ND filters all attached so I can shoot wide open. It is a 1.4 and I love that shallow depth of field. And in order to achieve that when you're shooting outdoors, especially on a sunny day, you're gonna need ND filters. So definitely get yourself some ND filters for any lens that you're using if you're shooting video. It's a pretty important component to have. So I'm chilling here at a little park by my girlfriend's mom's house in California where I'm staying. I kind of picked this spot because there's not really anything here that I could think of that would be amazing to shoot. But I wanted to challenge myself and, and also show you that anywhere you're at, you can get beautiful cinematic shots. And so I'm just gonna cruise around the park. There's a little pond over here too. Some nice trees, some birds. Maybe I'll catch a bird, but I'm usually pretty bad at catching birds on, on film. But yeah, I'm just gonna challenge myself, see if I can get the most cinematic shots I can get in kind of a just a standard park that any, anybody can go to. So first off, I'm gonna shoot some B-roll on the 50 millimeter 1.8 that I have on the camera right now. And then I'm gonna swap over to the Canon FD. I'm also going to, just for the hell of it, try out and compare my 16 to 35 millimeter uh, Sony Zeiss lens, because this is by far the nicest, most expensive lens I have at least. Um, I, I know that it's probably quite a bit sharper than the others. And the image quality, the glass is just better. Obviously it's not a 50 millimeter, so I'll shoot at 35 and I'll, you know, I'll zoom in and try to match them up. But I just wanna show you the difference between, you know, like a thousand dollar lens, a $250 lens, that Sony 1.8, and an $80 lens, this Canon FD 50 millimeter. And let's see the difference, see if you can tell and see which one you like better. Even if there is a big difference, maybe uh, there's one that you prefer more than the other. So let's check them out. Now we need to get some skin tones in here to compare them to. So I'm by myself. Well, I'm not by myself I'm with Coco, but Coco doesn't have any skin tones to see too much poof. So here is me on the 50 millimeter 1.8 Sony, that cheaper like $250 lens. All right, and this is me with the Canon FD 50 millimeter 1.4. 
Hopefully I'm in focus. I used my camera bag to focus and then moved it out of the way and sat in its place. I don't know if I'm perfectly in focus. I'm shooting at 2.8 right now, so I might be slightly out of focus, but you can see kind of the colors right here. And then here I am on the Sony Zeiss 16 to 35. And also it's, it only goes as low as F4. So I've been shooting at F4 on this lens, whereas the others I've been shooting at 2.8. I know that isn't the best comparison. I probably should have shot it all at four, but it's too late now. Anyway, this one I was just kind of throwing in anyway, just to see if it's really that much sharper because generally with older vintage lenses, they aren't necessarily the sharpest lenses, but they've got that character to them. One good thing to know is whatever the lowest aperture is on that lens. So on this one, for example, it's 1.4. Two stops above the lowest aperture is the sharpest that lens is. So this lens, two stops up, 1.4, two, 2.8 so 2.8 is the sharpest that this lens can be shot at if it's wide open at 1.4 it's going to be less sharp it's still going to look beautiful but it's not going to be really crisp like um, probably this lens is right now so one thing i have noticed big time difference with manually focusing this old vintage lens this canon with the 50 millimeter the sony and especially with the zeiss is this focus pull is a lot longer. So that means you can really dial in your focus a lot better because you have more kind of play with um, what's in focus, how quick it focuses. This lens was made to be manually focused and thus it's a lot easier to manually focus. This Zeiss, if you don't get it perfectly right on the right spot, it's out of focus and there's just a really short distance. I was only making little minor, minute changes and it was going in and out of focus like crazy. Whereas this one, I can have a lot bigger pull to play with to really nail that focus. So I'm back here in my little makeshift studio at my girl's mom's house. I'm pretty surprised by the results that I got from comparing these three lenses. So one of my biggest surprises is how good actually the Sony 50 millimeter 1.8, that $200 lens that I have, actually stands up to the vintage Canon lens. I still think that the Canon looks better and it makes sense because the glass is actually a lot higher quality. That Sony lens is like the cheapest lens you can pretty much get in their line. And so, you know, it's obviously not gonna be the best quality glass, whereas those old vintage Canon lenses were actually some of the nicer lenses of that time period. So they used really quality glass. But what I still like about the Canon lens, the vintage one, is it still has like this slightly more filmic look to it, I think. Let me know what you guys think. It's not that big of a difference, surprisingly, but I feel like it has a, a slight warmer feel to it. And you can really tell on the shot of me and the skin tones. I feel like that one looked significantly better. But there were actually shots too that I preferred the Zeiss lens. So it kind of just depends on what you're using these lenses for, what kind of look you want to go for. If you're shooting something more commercial, then the sharper that Zeiss lens would probably be your best bet because it just kind of pops a little bit more little bit more defined. But if you're wanting to shoot something more kind of moody and film-like, I still think that the vintage lenses out of all three of those look the best. But if you want something that has autofocus, which is understandable, you want something more all around that you can use for, you know, anything from shooting yourself like this to, you know, shooting a film as well, that Sony 50 millimeter is actually did surprisingly well. Don't stress too much about what lens you're using, especially if you're doing content for just YouTube, you're probably not gonna notice that big of a difference. But if you want to start playing around with lenses and you don't know exactly what focal lengths you want, vintage lenses are still, I think, the best way to get started and be able to try a range of different lenses and really figure out what focal lengths you like best. 
And then from there, you can, you know, splurge on something a little bit nicer once you now know exactly what you want to shoot with. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little comparison and look out for some more videos coming up. I just got back from a trip to Seattle. So I'm going to put together a little video of my trip up there. And if you're new to the channel and you like my videos, please subscribe. It really helps in growing my channel as I'm very young in this uh, YouTubing world. So I'd appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. See you later.